Hello, it's Jules. This is part four of how to needle felt a golden retriever. Here's our little alien dog. Last time we added the head and the eyeballs and today we're gonna add fur. As I've said before, I've only been needle felting since August of 2020. So if you have feedback, I would love to hear them in the comments. I'm always open to learning more because I wanna do better. So thank you so much for being here. These are from Big Sky Fiber Arts. And this one is from Gray Fox, I think. I'll have to look it up. I'll put all of my wool in the notes so you can see them, okay? Let's start with having this one as our reference photo. I think that's pretty good. So sometimes what I like to do is just cover the whole dog with fur like this, that's batting. So batting is fur that has really short fibers like this, see the short fibers? And it's all mixed up in different ways so that when you needle felt it on, it goes on really smoothly. So I'm gonna do that first so that her body is the right color and not this lighter core wool color. So I have a couple of needles here, like this one has two needles together and even felt alive needles that I love. They sell them like this with two needles, but I find these are kind of too close together, honestly, to do what I'm about to do. So I'm gonna use this one. This is just a super cheap needle holder that I got at, I think Michael's or Hobby Lobby. So let's start. And for this, I'm literally gonna just poke it right on. So pretty much from all of her so that just to start, she's, you know, about the right color. I'm not gonna do her legs because the legs, I wanna keep them kind of thin and be able to do those separately, but I'll do the whole body with this, except for the parts of her body that are white. I'm not gonna do that. Just the parts of her body that are this brownish color. And sometimes if I feel like I need to build up her body a little bit, I'll use this wool, this really soft batting to now build up a little bit more. The other thing I'm doing is making sure that her body's pretty firm because when we start to add the long fur, it's important that her body is pretty solid so that it has something to really tack onto. So you see how here it's lighter underneath, lighter on her legs, lighter here on her face. So I'm probably just gonna leave this, this part without and her face without. really skinny. I might add a little more here just to fatten her up a little bit. Of course, adding fur will make her bigger too. The long fur that is. getting there. This fur is so soft. Okay. 
So now in looking at the picture of the dog and the fur, I think I'm gonna go with something a little bit darker. See, this is too dark. This is too light. Might mix them together. Get a clump of fur like that, and a clump of fur like this. And then you literally just start mixing them by hand. Now, I do have these combs I've used to mix fur, but I find when I mix the fur with the combs that it gets very matted up, kind of like the batting, and the fibers go all over the place. And I find doing it by hand like this seems to get a much better result. Look at the variation in the fur colors. See? So if you mix fur like this, I mean wool, it tends to look a little bit more like real dog fur. I think it just takes a long time to do it. But worth it, worth the effort. smaller bits than this. I'm going to make it little small bits. Little short blended bits. Okay. And then we start to put them like this. Lay it on there flat like that. And then you just needle felt it in like this, just in the center. You rub it and rub it that way so I can add a little more. We'll add a little bit more. Now, when I do it, I don't do it immediately right next to it. We'll just leave a little space, just a little bit. And that's why we put all this fur on so that if you see between, it's not as obvious. We'll do a little more. You can start to see, see how it looks like fur? And we'll trim it later. So I'm gonna look at her. You can see a lot of this sort of blendy looking fur all along the back. And then on her legs it gets lighter. So I'll do all along the back first. And see how this is short and this is long? I'll trim it so that it matches better. I might have cut this one too short. So what I might do for that one is just maybe pin it right there so that it's not doubled over so much. It's just kind of pinned in and that way it's longer. See what I did? See how I just kind of stuck it on there that way? And then the, it's long like that. So oh, I'm going to do one more row with this and then I'll cut it and we'll see what it's looking like. So I'm not going to do her head just yet because I got to add the ears and her ears. I don't want to mess up this fur. This looks really long, maybe too long. It kind of cut into it a little bit.
I always get so nervous cutting their fur because I feel like it's easier to cut it down a little bit than have to add more. So I do it like really little tiny bits go in there. Try to make all of the fur kind of the same length, not exactly. Because I think it's easy to smooth it down and make it look blended. I believe doing the fur this way is called planting fur. You have to be careful not to put the fur too close together. Like these, like you see this, you want to put a little space in between. Otherwise, it gets really, really thick. You can kind of comb it down with their needle and see what it's looking like. I also have this little comb thing. Sometimes I comb the fur like this. Kind of get a sense of what it's looking like. It's all right. I feel like there's a little hole here and a little hole there. So we'll see, but adding some fur right there, fill in that little hole, maybe. This is camel wool and merino wool that I'm blending together. They're both really, really soft. And I think it's gonna make the fur really nice. This is looking kind of patchy. I'm going to fix that.
Now I'm tacking some of it down. It's getting real fluffy. For the bottom, I'm not gonna plant it. I'm just putting it in like this, where it's just, you know, covering up the core wall. She'll be sitting on it. I'm gonna put all light wool now, all here. I've never worked with camel's wool before, and man, it's like flyaway soft. So I didn't expect that. I mean, it's really nice, but that. I think I'm gonna call it good. Um, this ended up taking a lot longer than I anticipated, and. I like how her chest is lighter and the back is darker, but I think I'll save her face and ears, paws and legs and tail for another video. So please come back for part five of how to needle fill the golden retriever. Thank you so much for joining and I hope I see you next time.